Hello, and welcome to the first annual holiday movie watching extravaganza. Hey, it's a holiday. I got holes on holes in the other control. Yeah. My name is Presenter Jack, and the goal of this week's video is to basically watch as many of the highest rated Christmas movies before Christmas Day comes along. The list we'll be using. Uh, one's from IMDb and the other one's from Rotten Tomatoes. So we're going to watch one movie from IMDb, then we're going to switch over to Rotten Tomatoes, then IMDb again, back and forth, back and forth. You got the idea? Cool. Now, because it's such a big endeavor, I had to get some help, all right? Regrettably, I had to travel the multiverse to find another film buff like me, and uh, luckily I found one. So say hello to the people. Are we doing it now? All right, hey. My name is Zay. Uh, I'm a film buff, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to go ahead and uh, watch some movies with you. Jack, I, I, I'm I, a little concerned. Uh, you seem a little... Shut up. So he will be watching these movies with me, and uh, he'll review them, and then I'll put them in either Christmas Banger yeah. or Christmas Not A Banger, okay? Um, I know bangers. And I know bangers. I know bangers. So without further ado, let's get into the first movie. So the first movie we're going to be watching on IMDb is called It's a Wonderful Life, um, which was made back in 1946. If I'm not mistaken, it is given an 8.6 out of 10 rating on IMDb, which is interesting considering that if you look at the list, there is no 10 out of 10 Christmas movie. Not sure how to feel about that, but that's what IMDb is telling us. There is no 10 out of 10 Christmas movie ever, apparently. So it is what it is. Let's go on to watching the movie. Take it away, movie watcher Zay. Well, thank you, Jack. Uh, so I just finished It's a Wonderful Life, the first highest rated movie on IMDb, I believe. Honestly, it's very interesting. Like, I like this movie. Like, this movie is, like, serious, like, actual good movie. Like, I... Like, I, I sit there and watch it, and I was like, man, like, it may be from the 40s, you know, 1946, but, like, the message of the movie and the and the writing and the storytelling, like, it holds up. It still holds up to this day. I can definitely, like, sit here. I would definitely could sit here and, like, watch this as, like, a Christmas movie. And I'm like, I, I don't feel like anything is, like... It doesn't feel out of date. Only thing that feels out of date is sometimes, obviously, since this was made in the 40s, there's a lot of references and there's like no, number one, there's only white people in this whole movie. It's like one black chick and she's like pseudo slave. So like, they don't say slave, but like, she's kind of like, um, she's a maid. So like, yeah. Um, But other than that, like, but she's not treated like shit. She's like the in the movie she's treated like, you know, she's just we like her, you know, she's cool. You know, and she's a great, you know, it's a random side character. Um the character itself, really good. The main character, I really like this story. Movies like these, we need to make more Christmas movies like these. Maybe there are let me know down in the comments if there are movies recently who are like this. But, like, basically the idea of, like, oh, like, you, you're you living your life, you don't realize how, how much positive things is in your life, how much thing, how much stuff you have influenced yourself, you know, as one person. You know, one person can change a lot of people's lives, you know, and a lot of people don't realize that. You got to really think about what have you done in your life, you know, about the idea that he, like, he saved his brother when he, when they were nine, or he, when his brother was nine, he saved his brother from dying. Right. And if he and if he wasn't there, his brother would have died, you know, and that's a a thing that I think a lot of people who deal with depression don't understand, you know, and it, it, it does definitely does stand the test of time because this movie is rated 8.6 on the on IMDb and it it got over 400,000 votes. People voted for this movie to be number one on the spot. You know what I mean? It's just interesting. It has an 89 meta score. It's just, it, it's a legit, like, you can't go wrong with this movie. Like, honestly, it, it can't go wrong with this movie. You come out outside of the movie thinking, like, yeah, 
this is definitely made me feel better you know this definitely like helped a lot and make me think like man what have i you know what have i as a person done you know to maybe help people in life or you know what have how have i impacted other people's lives and it makes you think it's like man like you really think about the stuff you've done in life like yeah there's a lot there's a lot of things you've, you've influenced a lot of people whether you know it or not you know and that should be something that everybody should be aware of you know and i think this movie really hammers that home and uh yeah i love it i love this movie a great movie um definitely would watch it again with like family or like you know just in general you know i think it's just a genuine good family movie you know and uh yeah back to you jack thank you zay for that insightful information what that's weird that's better thanks uh for for that so watching this movie like you said i really enjoyed it stood the test of time will i give it A banger or not a banger? I'm giving it a banger. It's a banger. It's a, it's a, it's a genuine banger. It's, it's at the top of the list for a reason. Let's keep it at the top of the list. All right. Yeah. Moving on to the next movie. We got Meet Me in St. Louis. Now, this is over on Rotten Tomatoes. Number one on Rotten Tomatoes as the best Christmas movie on Rotten Tomatoes. This is their list. Okay. A hundred percent. hundred percent. This is interesting because... This says a lot about Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb and how they view movies, which is interesting to me. But uh, yeah, I got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So this movie must be like just hands down, just God tier. Talk to me, Zay. All right. So yeah, I just finished the uh, movie Meet Me in St. Louis. Very interesting i'm lying it wasn't that interesting actually it was kind of boring I'm not gonna lie to you i don't understand personally i'm not a musical type of guy i don't like musicals like that so 90 percent of this movie actually i take it back 70 percent of this movie was musicals and 30 percent was the actual plot and i honestly like it kind of ruined the movie for me however the plot that we did get I do think it was it was pretty wholesome. It was a wholesome story, you know, about basically staying home or staying at a place familiar. You know, we have, you know, the guy, the dad wanted to move to New York to get a higher paying job. But you have a family of you have a you have six kids, mind you, I think five or six kids. And you want to move to New York of all places. Come on, gang. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> like they were right for saying that he they should stay there you know like you moved to new york with six kids i think six like come on no no but yeah it i just couldn't i couldn't i couldn't get over the fact that those two there was so many music they like musical numbers and i'm just like i don't care i don't care for musical numbers they ruined the movie for me like unless the whole movie is a musical i don't even watch that i don't even watch that i don't care you know what i mean now, uh, but that's just me though. Um, the acting in this was surprisingly pretty good. This was made in 1944, uh, even though the story itself was happening in 1903, which is interesting. I had I, for for the for the story parts, I had a good enough time. Uh, I didn't hate any of it, but you know, not bad. You know, definitely wouldn't watch it again though. Sadly, like I said, all the musicals and stuff was just too much. Oh uh, yeah, personally, I don't see why it's so high up on the list. Back to you, announcer Jack. Oof, Zay didn't like that one, huh? Yikes. Um, well, I can't say I blame him. I watched it too. Not a big fan of it either. Shit was ass. I don't like musicals. Yeah, not a fan of that one. Um, so because of that, I'm gonna have to give it to not a banger. Sadly, not a banger. This is not a banger. I don't know why. Rotten Tomatoes hyped up this uh, this movie this much to give it a hundred percent on the list. Insane to me. I don't I don't understand. Hey, if I'm missing some important details here, let me know down in the comments below. Okay, 
All right, on to the next movie. Next, we got How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Well, we all know this movie. Apparently, this was made in 1966. I did not know that. <laughs> Most of us have seen this movie. Now, we're going to rewatch it again and see how well it holds up compared to when I was a kid. I, have, I haven't watched it in a while. Apparently, it was given an 8.3 out of 10 on the IMDb scale. So that's uh, good. I would I would have given it like a 9 out of 10 personally, but when I was a kid. But uh, let's see how it holds up today. All right, Zay, take it away. All right, back at it again with another one. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. I appreciate that, by the way. How a Grinch Stole Christmas. It holds up to this day. Well, it holds up as in, like, it's a good feel-good movie to watch, you know? And it's just like, I could watch it, you know? I'll watch it again. You know, it's fun to watch. Uh, it's like 25 minutes. It's not even a full movie. It's like a, <laughs> you know, short film at max. So, but it's good, though. I think it's a good message. And... Kind of like the Grinch was never really the, like the, the bad guy. I mean, he is, but like he didn't want to be, you know, he just hated Christmas because apparently, you know, he was, you know, he just had a history of being of Christmas being bad for him, you know. And there's like uh, there's other movie, there's other Grinch movies where they go deeper into like his backstory and stuff. And I feel like I find that does that, honestly. And uh, yeah, I definitely would watch it again. Uh, eight point three on the on the on the ranking, I think that's fair. I probably wouldn't give it an eight point three. I'd probably give it like, if I had to give it something, probably like a seven point five or something like that. But I would. But at the end of the day, I just I watch it again. That's all. That's all that really really matters. Jim Carrey's the goat. I didn't watch the one with Jim Carrey though. I watched the old one, and uh, yeah. Back to you, Jack. Well, as expected, it held up. This is a certified classic banger. Good job, Mr. Grinch. You did it, man. <laughs> With that out of the way, we have the final movie of this video. So I was going to do more videos, but I don't know. I kind of like to stick it at four. So next year, we're going to go down the list again. Yeah, we're going to continue the list. We're going to keep doing this every year. OK, so if you like this, like the like the like like the, the hit the like button. All right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll keep doing this every year. All right. So for the final movie, we have The Shop Around the Corner, made in 1940 in Hungary. So this is a Hungarian movie, uh, which I'm glad we have an international one now. So that's that makes me happy. The Shop Around the Corner has a 99% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. That's high. That's insane. I mean, that's... Man, honestly, I kind of am worried about the you know the fact that the, the one we watched before uh meet me in st louis was kind of ass so i'm hoping this movie to be way better and uh we'll find out won't we zay all right just finished shop around the corner uh yeah just finished the shop around the corner the movie um and wow this movie is very interesting it, it it took a while to get going but once it did i was like i'm invested i'm invested in this story for it, it, it i was because i was like why is this movie taking so long to get to the point where he told her the truth you know what i mean they were like dragging it they were dragging this the whole fucking time however though the movie itself was very wholesome I really enjoyed it. Everybody, there was no like definitive villain. I mean, yes, there, there was because the guy was one of the employees was, you know, spoilers, was sleeping with the with the manager's wife. So uh, that whole thing is a whole thing. But like he was he was dealt with like towards the middle of the movie. Then the rest of the movie was just was just the main character and the girl he was interested in, he was going to tell her the truth and stuff. And it was just it was a whole back and forth. I'm just sitting here like, bro, just tell her, bro. This is why I don't watch love. This is why I don't, I'm not like a big romance guy because for some reason, I just don't like it when they just drag on the fact that they're like, they're not going to tell each other they love each other and stuff. It's just, it's just, but 
I did like what what the message was. I don't know about the message. I do. I don't know what the message was. To be honest, this was made in hung in Hungary, Hungary. Uh, I don't know how to uh, Hungary, Hungary, hung, Hungary, Hungary. I don't know. They were Hungarian, okay. And um, I liked it. It was cool. I liked it. I liked the I liked the writing. Like the dialogue was really good in this movie. Um, it it didn't feel it didn't feel old timey. It felt like. It felt really like it was like a lot of like wits and a lot. I like that. I like dialogue that has a lot of wit in it and a lot of like, you know, back and forth dialogue and stuff like that. It didn't feel, it didn't feel like slow or the dialogue. Like I liked it. I just, I enjoyed it. I had a great time. The main character was great. It's the same main character from the other movie that we watched on this list called It's a Wonderful Life, uh, John Stewart. Uh, so shout out to John Stewart for being in two of the uh of the in the list so that's interesting uh so yeah that's all for me and i uh, definitely would watch it again that's for sure all right back to you jack all right thank you so much zay for joining me on this week's video uh thank you guys for watching this week's video i really appreciate it um to close out this video it's going up in banger it has to it's way better than meet me in st louis that's for sure and just for that it's just you know no musicals you know you know how i feel about those <laughs> but yeah great movie i really enjoyed it like i said i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to have a great holiday slash christmas or new year's eve i will be back next year for well more videos and uh I have a lot of cool ideas for this channel, so don't go anywhere. Subscribe. I will be back next year, same time, to do it again, all right? I might even have some other YouTuber friends join me. You never know. And like the video and uh, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.